The leading development financial institution in Africa, the Development Bank of Southern Africa, focuses on the primary issues facing many Africans, such as education and healthcare and infrastructure development and the like. However, today I do ask the question of smart financing infrastructure in Africa, following from the conversations that will take place at the upcoming 28th World Economic Forum on Africa. I'm joined by Paul Curry, the Chief Investment Officer at the Development Bank of Southern Africa for more. So it's just around the corner happening uh, next week yes, in Cape Town. Um, you know, infrastructure development is obviously going to be a big talking point. I mean, it's been a big talking point for eons right now. Um, and I'm just interested as the Development Bank of, of, of Southern Africa, how do you think the conversations will be different this time around so we can actually see effective change being implemented? Fifi, I think uh, the change that's necessary is really probably more in a, as a mindset change in terms mm -hmm. of what is possible in Africa. Africa has a unique opportunity in from an infrastructure sp perspective to really leapfrog to some extent um, what the rest of the world needed to do. Um, and technology is providing a unique way of, of looking at things. Because essentially if one looks at infrastructure, infrastructure is essentially what is put in place to provide services to the underlying citizenry. And if one follows simple traditional mechanisms of power, water and transportation, mm. one looks at big projects and, and really infrastructure is, is looking or is, is, is now looking at different ways to deliver similar types of services. I think things like broadband are absolutely critical. Broadband transforms the environment that it, it is in through enabling he better healthcare, better education, and better economics. No, for sure, because I mean, the, 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 um, I think the thing is now, as we talk about you know, increasing connectivity and the benefits that that, that will bring, is when you're rolling out new, new schools or new roads or new hospitals, um, it's about ensuring that as we do you know, uh, build these hard infrastructure developments, that there's soft in softer infrastructure that also comes in there by way of broadband or fiber in these things. We've got, you know, Wi-Fi hotspots around um, to enable economic activity to, to take place. And I'm just thinking and I'm wondering, you know, as the, as the DBSA, when you're looking at projects to finance and, and, and funders who, who you approve, are, are, are some of these the, the, the checks that you, that you take off before um, dispersing of capital? Absolutely, we have very, very um, clear criteria in, in what we put in place. We're very conscious of, of stranded assets in, in the sense of where technology is moving mm. to and not to create um, infrastructure that's going to be outdated in the very short term. I think what's also important in that is we, we see some of this technology as being able to um, be used in, in very different ways. Uh, the DBSA is really looking at two major new streams. As a DFI, our job is to assume more risk. Mm. I mean, we're capitalized by the state, so that capital has to be used in an effective way to actually almost pioneer certain new solutions. And, and at the moment, there are two major streams that we're looking at, one in the formal um, economy and one in what I would almost term the informal economy. Formal economy is a blended finance type solution, which is really aimed at drawing public and private sector finance mm -hmm. together to finance programmatic infrastructure, something this country needs desperately at the moment in terms of some of its infrastructure needs, particularly in the... When you say programmatic infrastructure, what do you mean? Okay, what I mean by that is really where you have a project that is repeatable, although not, not in a cookie cutter type of approach, but where you have a similar need in multiple spaces. At the moment, many, uh, many of our municipalities, for example, have to do everything by themselves. So the idea is to create mechanisms uh, for programmatic infrastructure. If one looks at the water, sanitation, um, and the, the roads needs, for example, there are many opportunities there to create that type of solution to actually support those entities in implementing it and improving the underlying service provision. I mean, me, of course, as we, as we are meeting for this leg of WEF Africa, eh, we're meeting for the first time under this free trade area that has received the you know, necessary signatures for ratification and that is now at implementation or discussion phase, headed to implementation phase. And I'm wondering, as, as, as a Southern Africa DFI, um, you know, with the other DFIs on the continent that also have the same aim and mandate of, of, of developing um, the continent, how the, the synergies between all of you guys? How is that working? The synergies amongst the DFIs. Yes. We collaborate significantly amongst the DFIs, and one of our roles um, has been historically that of capacity building. 
And we've worked with a number of countries in the region and their DFIs to, to do that and to support them. And we continuously have engagements mm. with many of them. Um, and we also uh, would, in many occasions, look to co-finance with them so that we, we benefit. They have a, a much deeper knowledge of their specific environment. Um, so it's, it's far easier for us to engage in the infrastructure needs mm -hmm. that exist in those countries if we can co-participate and co-fund with them, which we, we attempt to do wherever we possibly can. I mean, one of the big, uh, the big um, challenges are, is you know, the ultimate money in the bank. And you did speak about different forms of, of financing methods, you blend in finance and the like. But uh, one of the major challenges facing many um, countries is the fact that, I mean, they, they're squeezed. They are squeezed for cash. And then afterwards, you've got the situation whereby funding mostly takes place in, in, in foreign currency, which makes um, them even harder squeezed for cash. What's your thinking around that? And especially as debt levels are, are, are really becoming at or reaching problematic levels, if not already there. That's, that's, that's a very real um, challenge for Africa in the sense of the, the dollar dependency. And we think we need to work together with other DFIs as hard as, as, is, as is possible to actually free up local capital. Because mm -hmm. in many instances, there, there is local capital. It's just not available at the tenors and, and um, time frames required. In some in instances, it's quite small. Um, certainly, we would also look to see blending risk if it, you know, to the extent that that's possible. In the South African context, government debt is, is, is re fairly high, but the, mm. the private sector has, is significantly underinvested in infrastructure. Mm. Um, and there is, if we can find a, an, an acceptable way to do that and to, to, co to create these co-investments in, in core infrastructure, it would be a, a certainly a way to accelerate that development. Mm. And, and that's something we, we're looking at very hard with, with people like ASISA and with BASA and the banks. Um, in how to formulate and structure something. Like that. I mean, because uh, when I was on the the WEF website, I, I didn't realize that we had so many uh, elections and political changes on the continent this year. I think around twenty, and uh, you know, speaking specifically in South Africa's case, I mean, one of the reasons why we have a private sector that is underinvested in infrastructure is because of the changing, you know, political uh, landscape. They, 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 they you, you never know what's coming in terms of regulation, and it makes pricing for risk um, very, very difficult. In your engagements with the private sector, you know, really trying to strengthen those PPPs, what are some of the main concerns or, or issues that do come up that uh, certainly, you know, South Africa's government and even African governments can work on to improve so as to free up the capital to fund this infrastructure? I think the primary requests that we see in those spaces are one of, of transparency and good governance. Mm. And to the extent that we can establish programs that clearly can clearly demonstrate that and that uh, the conversion of capital to a utility and to a real asset is, is quite clear and transparent, there's significant support for it. A lot of the private sector investors are well aware of the need for infrastructure as, it, as it's fundamentally the lifeblood of the economy in the long run and failing infrastructure has its, has its negative impacts. Ultimately, I mean, I, I, I do understand that the DBSA does a lot of work and engagements with the public and even the private sector about the opportunities across the continent. I mean, mm -hmm. you play quite broadly. Um, I was once listening to your, your one of your initiatives and you were talking about undertapped areas on the continent being, you know, a lot of the, 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 the francophone countries because of obvious barriers like, like language and the like. But what is your messaging about how to overcome you know, things like the language and to extract the opportunities that do lie in those economies, many of which are growing at much faster rates than the big guys like, like South Africa mm -hmm. and Nigeria. I think it cycles back to your earlier question around collaboration with partners on the mm -hmm. ground. Um, and, and that goes a long way. I mean, we also have um, partnerships with international DFIs, um, particularly um, AFD, Agence France Development, who are very active in the francophone spaces. And where we are in, sp in uh, projects like that, we would typically engage with some of those partners too, as well as the local uh, DFIs. And, you know, just as we wrap up, the role of, of external partners in financing infrastructure, of course, I mean, we do have a lot of attention coming from I the Asian region uh, specifically about, you know, uh, doing more business on the continent. There's a, there's th there seems to be quite a different view of, of projects that are that are that are ready for for capitalization and the like with 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 the the role of 
the Asian party seeming to have more of an appetite for risk than um, the traditional banks or lending institutions or DFIs here on the continent. What's your, what's your view on that? As a DFI, we will typically look very carefully at what we see as the needs in that space at the time, both from a national perspective in the country we're looking at and the regional perspective. Mm. If it makes sense, we, will, we literally will partner with, with any um, investor who's coming in there, provided it, it meets those criteria, is developmental, is not going to result in a stranded asset and is going to be to the benefit of the country and the region in the long run. Yeah, ultimately it's all about the agenda 2063 uh, 2063 goals, right, yeah. in terms of achieving that sustainable development. Correct.